Dr. Paul is calling in to say, hey, I'm on my way to Fargo. By golly, North Dakota, the epicenter of uh, what's happening, one of 10 Super Tuesday states. And it's a pleasure to welcome back to the program, Dr. Ron Paul. Welcome back. How are you? Good, Scott. Thanks for having me on. Just wearing you out or are you loving this? Well, I don't know whether love is the best word for it, but uh, it's very stimulating and encouraging. And I get a lot of energy from especially the young people who are very, very interested in the concern about the future. So it, uh, I, I tell people at the rallies that if it, it's serious business, but if you're not having fun, then there's a problem. You better have fun because it's, uh, you, know, you can get depressed over thinking only about our problems. So no, I, I wouldn't do it if I didn't think it was worthwhile and enjoy it. Well, you'll be having some fun tonight with the Fargo caucus scores. You'll be at the uh, Ramada Plaza Suites, 5.30 tonight, actually, uh, you know, at the, at the caucus, stumping for the votes yourself, uh, mingling with folks. Uh, does this mean uh, you think North Dakota will, will provide the first win for the Paul campaign in the, in the 2012 cycle? You know, I think it's a very, very good possibility, and that's why we've been uh, coming into North Dakota quite frequently. You know, uh, and it is true, we haven't won any of the straw votes, but we're pretty certain that, there's close to three states that we've won now in getting the most number of delegates, but uh, uh, and that's what really counts. But PR wise, you gotta you gotta win the straw votes too. So that's what we're aiming for tonight. North Dakota, do you need to win a state tonight to stay in this? I don't think it's an absolute need, but it sure would give a tr- tremendous boost. You can still get a lot of delegates, and uh, not you know if you keep splitting them up, and you always come in second or third. You know, all of a sudden you can accumulate because some of the other candidates win one state and then they're fourth in the other one. So they're not accumulating even as much. So it'll have to be sorted out. I think we'll learn a whole lot tonight. North Dakota energy is a big deal. You've obviously spent a lot of time here. You've been in the oil patch. I want to get your take on that. And also, uh, I know that Newt Gingrich was talking about a goal of 250 gas. You've, you've doubled down and said we can do dime gas. How do we get to dime gas? <laughs> Just price it in real money. If you priced it in the silver coinage that we had up until 1965, uh, actually oil prices have gone down. Gasoline prices would be only a dead dime a gallon, uh, which proves the point that... Uh, Oil prices and energy prices don't really go up. It's the dollar that goes down in value. And uh, that, of course, is something I've been trying to get people to understand, is that you can't live off debt and printing money. You know, we have a debt system based on the more you spend, the more money you have. Uh, It makes no sense, but it's coming to an end today. Once again, uh, that settlement they had over the Greek debt, Hasn't worked. Now they're probably into the, about the 25th the solution, and the markets are very uneasy because there is no easy solution. When the world gets engulfed with this kind of debt, and even our country with the debt we have, the debt has to be liquidated one way or for the other, and politically that's very difficult for people to accept. A lot of the other candidates have said that more domestic energy production, and by the way, Obama has an ad out right now saying, hey, under my presidency, production's gone up, which, of course, it has, but despite him. But do you believe that uh, the domestic energy revolution, not unlike what we're seeing in North Dakota, could solve much of our economic woes in this country? Yeah, it sure could. Uh, but, you know, regardless, I don't think you have to worry a whole lot about the exact amount of energy we have in our country. What we have to worry about is the freedom we have to seek and get that oil or alternative energy. For instance, uh, Japan doesn't have any oil, but I don't think they they talk a whole lot about it. They just go in Am- to Amsterdam and make, <laughs> make their bids, and they buy it on the world market. But the freer the market, the more you can produce and the more uh, less vulnerable you are. So if there's a Mideast war, like they're, like, I mean, even worse than they're doing now, and If they go along with some of the advocates who want to start bombing Syria and then bomb uh, Iran, uh, that's going to make the problems that much worse. So the more independence you have, uh, the better. But all things being equal, what you need is more freedom. You need less regulation. You need a good tax system. You need to get the government out of the way. You need to get the government out of subsidizing one form of energy over another. And I, I... personally wouldn't worry about it if we had that freedom. I worry about not having enough freedom of choice and freedom in the marketplace and a sound currency. If we had that, we wouldn't have to worry about our energy problems. Laurel says, since we hear saber rattlings and the talk of airstrikes, should we be building up the military war chest? Ron Paul, I believe, is an isolationist. Is he comfortable that we are sitting ducks without military power? Well, he's very uninformed because... We have more weapons than everybody else has put together, and if you and I believe strongly in a strong national defense, that is a responsibility of the federal government. But nobody's going to invade us. Nobody's going to attack us. 
Uh, our, our greatest threat right now is our financial crisis in the attack of our civil liberties by our own government. And uh, we, uh, we spend more money than everybody else, uh, and we're the biggest arms manufacturer. We sell arms. We're, we're doing exactly what Eisenhower warned us against, uh, letting the military-industrial complex uh, control us. The danger that we have now is because we're in too many countries, bombing too many people. Just think after 11 years in Afghanistan about what we've got, <clears throat> I've gotten there. It's the, one of the worst countries in the world for child starvation. I mean, that's about what the results are. In Iraq, Iraq, we've been more or less made them close allies of the, uh, the Iranians. And the whole policy it makes no sense whatsoever. And it's going to bring us down. This is how all great nations come down, is they overextend themselves and they go into too much debt. That's how the Soviet system collapsed. And we're on the verge of doing that to ourselves. So we ought to have a better perspective on why we have to be more cautious about the wasteful spending overseas and defend this country. That's one thing I think that we can do very, very well. Nobody's going to attack us militarily. Two other quick things. One, last time you were on, you made some news by talking about uh, the fact that your staff was talking to the staff of the Romney folks. Folks saw you not even campaigning in Michigan, but running against uh, ads against uh, Rick Santorum. Has that alliance gone uh, a little stronger between you and, and Governor Romney? Well, I would never call an alliance. I would uh, call it cordiality. You know, we talk to each other. We're friendly. And, of course, <clears throat> one time we have talked about coordinating schedules. But <clears throat> as far as a political alliance, it's a long way from that because I see the other three candidates as all representing the status quo, and, and their, their, their positions are pretty much uniform, where mine, of course, are much different. Last question. We talked to Donald Trump earlier. He's agreed to come host a, a debate specifically on energy with all of you candidates. Would you, would you come to North Dakota and do a debate on energy? I, I would. I would certainly consider it. I uh, turned down the debate the last time. Uh, Trump was the one that was organizing it. I don't think he's the most uh, independent-minded person to be managing a political debate. But another debate on energy, yes, I would participate, uh, depending on the circumstances. But I think it would be a good idea. It's a big issue. Should there be more debates uh, after Super Tuesday? Oh, well, I have sort of mixed feelings on that. Debates have done a lot of good for our campaign. It always gives us a great political boost, more donors, and uh, and, and more volunteers. So they've, they've been a, a very big net benefit to us. But uh, I think we've had about 22 of them. And depending on the circumstances, yes, if there's a, a reasonable debate opportunity presented, I would be uh, willing to participate. All right. Dr. Paul, thanks for coming back to North Dakota. Appreciate uh, all the uh, time and attention you've given North Dakota voters in this uh, run-up to Super Tuesday. We'll see you tonight. Thank you, Scott.